New Orleans, Louisiana, the Crescent City with its great sporting tradition once again welcomes the Sitco Bassmaster Classic. On this day, aspirations are high, especially for last year's classic champ, Jay Ellis, who took the victory and hasn't lost Bassmaster momentum since. Classic champion, Jay Ellis. A classic victory. It's the top prize in the sport. Nothing else even comes close. The 61 anglers who have qualified are thinking of nothing else as they begin three days of intense competition. On everyone's radar screen is Kevin Van Dam, who won the classic here in 2001. Kevin Van Dam is your classic champion. He's done it. He did it. Winning the classic, it's one of the hardest things in the world to do, and winning it here in the Louisiana Delta requires even more. Maybe even a little bit of good luck. Lots of variables you can't control. The first classic in New Orleans, 1999, it was Davey Hyde who figured it out and won the trophy. He's ready to get another roll started right here. The Louisiana Delta, it takes everything you've got and then asks for more. We're about to find out who's got more to give this time around in 2003. Well, off we go. You know, this is the, the start of my 21st classic appearance, and I haven't won one yet, and uh, I'm really excited about this one. Even though I had a real tough practice, at least I'm going to be flipping. I'm going to be flipping a jig, real shallow water, and that's the way I like to fish, and I really feel that in order for me to win a classic, this is a great opportunity. So I'm going to run a long ways. I'm going to have about maybe three and a half hours of fishing, but it, if the fish are there, it's only going to take me about maybe 30 minutes to catch a good string or a fish. It's about 7 o'clock, and hopefully I'll be fishing by about 9 o'clock. But, uh, hey, you know, this is the Bass Bassers Classic, and uh, anything can happen here, so let's go do it. Bassmaster Tournament Trail is presented by Bush. This is the big one, the Bassmaster sure. Classic. We're on day one. Gary Klein and half no. the field actually made their way here to Venice, Louisiana. Yeah. Gary started his day pitching that black and blue jig that he is famous for. Up against the bank, around the cover. This is a technique we will see a lot of today. An angler will see a lot of today. We gotta settle down. Just me fishing. I mean, that's like, you know, first fish in the Classic is a good kicker. I mean, that, that gets you jacked. Gary Klein is jacked. Of course, we're all jacked. This is our big event of the year on the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. I'm Tommy Sanders, along with Jerry McKinnis, and what a story we have to tell today. Our big story, what really went on at the Bassmasters Classic, including all the fishing, it was terrific. Wasn't it, though? And we're talking about a 500-square-mile playing field. How about that? <laughs> and that's the big story, the distances these guys are running to get to the fish. And if you go to the DeSolomons area, it's not too bad. It takes you an hour and a half to get there. You've got pretty, a pretty full day to fish, but if you decide to go to Venice, you may have a five-hour round-trip uh, run to Venice. That only leaves you with two and a half, maybe three hours of fishing. And then if you decide to run over to Delacroix, which is fairly close to New Orleans as the crow flies, but if you go by boat, you have to go way down the Mississippi River. It takes you five hours, again, round trip to make it over there cuts down on your fishing. Boy, I'm telling you what, go to Bayou Black now, it's still not still not very close, but it's only a three hour round trip. That at least gives you five hours to fish. Let's take a look at one pair going to Bayou Black. It's Mark Menendez, but he, he's got some company. He's got someone with him. It's his dog, Barkley. What about it, Barkley? You ready for a ride, buddy? We're gonna go for a long way. We're gonna have fun. We're going to have fun. Well, that's the way you enjoy the classic. Take your fishing buddy with you. Now to the guy who won it all here in 1999, Davey Hyde of Prosperity, South Carolina. And Davey is in Lake Buff, and yes, he won this four years ago. Boy, yeah. he had a tough season this past year, though, so he's he's really trying to trying to make up some time here. My son caught one here when we were pre-practicing right there. That's for you, buddy. And there is a bass on a crankbait, but you're not going to see very many caught on a crankbait today. I don't believe most of the bass that they were going to bring in, and you can bring in five, incidentally, will be caught pitching something up against that bank it, in these narrow canals in a real shallow water. They're using real heavy line. Gary Klein's using 85-pound test line. He's using a real long rod. And, and I have to say that the Delta has recovered nicely from all those hurricanes back three or four years ago. 
And Gary has already got two fish in the boat here. He's having a great start for the day. And this one will be number three. It's a nice one. Gary Klein fishing in Venice where the Mississippi River runs into the Gulf. And can you believe it? Same tournament, Mark Menendez fishing 200 miles right. away in Bayou Black. <coughs> Stay, baby. Stay pegged. Stay pegged. Yeah! Woo! Let's get started. Yeah, six pounder. Booyah! What about that, buddy? What about that? Yeah, you're not impressed, are you? All right. Man, what a great way to get started in the Bassmasters Classic. That's an understatement for sure. That is a terrific start for Mark Menendez. And take a look at the difference in the vegetation. Bayou Black, where we saw Mark fishing there, with its typical bayou-style vegetation. Over to Venice, Louisiana, with the miles and miles of reed lines and all those elephant ears lining the canals. There's one. Yeah, buddy. See how tight they are? Sucker, see how far back up in there? Nice two and three quarter pounder. That gets me jacked. Little trough that runs way back up in there in the bow of the boat sitting in 15 feet. And this is almost a stair step, pretty steep bank. And she was sitting way back up in there. I actually tried to get that flip like three different times and finally I got the right angle and got it way up in there. Let it settle out, lift it up, and you could feel the weight. Gary Klein over to Jay Kendrick from Tennessee, one of the rising stars on the Bassmaster Tour. Had a terrific finish earlier this year at the tour event in Hot Springs National Park, Arkansas. A nurse anesthetist by trade. And Jay made the long, treacherous trip over to Delacroix. And matter of fact, he made it with three other boats, and they made a pact that if anybody Thank broke you, down, the others would wait on you. Tommy, if I had 15 pounds over there, I think I'd leave you if <laughs> you, you broke down. You'd come and get me, but it would be the next day, yeah, right? Yeah, it would be tomorrow. And uh, Jay is about to put a really kicker fish in the boat right off the bat. Yes. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Louisiana three and a half pound largemouth bass. Brought to you straight from the secret place. Over now to Jay Yellis, our defending classic champion, another one of our many anglers who have made that big commitment. Made that long run over to Venice, Louisiana, and he has found himself what looks like the perfect spot. Not very far from the marina, actually, right there in the middle of Venice. You know what, Tommy? What Jay is. will catch a limit of fish here in about 10 minutes. He will end up today with uh, uh, 10 and a half pounds, which is a very good start, uh, but, but he never did get a big one. Man, did he catch him in a hurry, though. I think this Delta has really had a great comeback. They're not big. But and that yeah. comeback actually came after the hurricanes. We've had several hurricanes down there in the, in the past five years. Yeah, and, and what big. happens, the salt water comes in there and kills a lot of the grass. And no, boy, the bass there. fishing just went to pot. I remember last classic we was here two years ago, the guys had a hard time catching any fish, much less five in about 10 minutes. Jay Ellis doing exactly what he needs to do to stay in contention. Gary Klein now doing much the same thing, one after the other in dirtier water. Let's check in with another one of our big names, Kevin Van Dam. Well, I've really been struggling all day long and just not capitalizing on my bites, but this area here has got real clear water on it. And I was, <laughs> I had it in my mind to go to a whole different area about 20 miles away and we got caught in a really big rainstorm and it was moving this direction. So I just thought, because I've seen it in the past uh, where I've been able to catch a bunch of big fish in a hurry when one of these storms come in, um, I thought I'd run back here to this clear water area and see if I could, you know, get well in a hurry. I don't have a lot of time to fish and um, just thought I'd really, really work. I did catch one, but and they're not biting like I thought they would in here. I mean, this area has got a lot of big fish in it. With the time that I've got left, I knew it's uh, the best chance I got to catch a good stringer under those weather conditions. We've still got some storms in the area, and 
I'm gonna keep giving it a whirl. You can catch them so fast when, when the uh, when the conditions get just right and you get in just the right little area in this this type of area. I've just I've done it in the past and I'm hoping to do it again. We are watching action from day one of the Bassmaster Classic, and yes, this area is so big that it can be raining nasty in Venice. Very nice over here at Bayou Black with Mark Menendez. All right, got me another one of them good ones, Barkley. Got me another one of them good ones. There we go. That's a good fish right there, too. You know what? We have seen lots of good fish today. A pretty good day of fishing on this first day of the Classic. What a start for this important, important event. And after every day, of course, our anglers make the short jaunt from Bayou Signet, the launch point, to the New Orleans Arena, where thousands of the bass fishing faithful are gathered, being wildly entertained by Fish Fishman, the Waymaster, ready to hear what the 61 anglers have to say about their day. Take a look at the top 10 here with Mark Menendez and Barkley, I guess, on top. Mike Iaconelli right behind him. Jay Ellis, defending champ in sixth place. Roland Martin hanging in there in 12th place. Some other big names, Grigsby in 34th. Kevin Van Dam in 38th. And Takahiro Mori, a tough day in 46th. It's all Menendez, Barkley take the lead. We'll line them up again for day two when we return. All right, all right, let's go. We're gonna catch one. We're gonna catch a big one. Tell me now, Barkley. Yeah. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Sitco, by Bush, and by Skeeter. I'm very relaxed. I'm just going to go out and have fun and uh, enjoy the day and take advantage of every opportunity. And if he bites, I'm just going to try to catch him. And you know, day one's over, and we're going for day two, and that's all it takes. Well, I'm making a long run. It's about 85 miles. It's not a difficult run. Uh, I've got it here mapped in my Lawrence, and um, afraid of a little bit of rough water. There's some rough water areas there that you've got to go through, but uh, Barkley can handle it. I can handle it, and we'll get there and back. The day one leader, Mark Menendez, ready for his trip back to Bayou Black. Very few in this field have less than two hours running time in front of them before they get to their spot and actually start fishing. Menendez, Klein, Iconelli, Tim Horton, they got a good jump, but this event is still wide open. Now over to fourth place, Tim Horton. All right, that's a start. You got a chunky little fish. Well, the tide looked pretty good this morning here in Venice, and when it's uh, low like this, the fish position themselves real close to that reed line, and Timmy Harton will tell you they're kind of easy to catch, but when that tide starts in, the water moves back in the cover, and it pulls the bait with it, and, and the bass, of course, are not too far behind. Then you have a situation where the anglers can't hardly get to them. Right now, though, things are looking pretty good. It's been a reaction strike right, right when the tube falls through the high since that's on this young Viber King tube. But the, the deal has been, as soon as it goes through, that fish I actually pumped the bait three or four times before he came and got it. So we may have to try to slow down a little bit today. We, oh, man. This, we don't really have much tide movement, so they may not be quite as active. Mark Menendez looking like he's starting his day just like he did on day one with another good fish. All right. Number one. All right. What do you think, Marks? What do you think, buddy? A good way to get started. All right. Mark Menendez looking like solid gold at this point in the proceedings. Let's track Davey Hyde as he heads toward his fishing place down from Bayou Signet, down there through Lake Salvador, and then through Lake Des Almonds, down through the wilderness now to this spot, Bayou Buff. Great start for Davey yesterday. He ended up in eighth place with a 10 pound, seven ounce stringer. Oh, and this will be his second fish, and that'll, that'll boost him up around 16 pounds. That puts a different perspective on things. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful fish. Look at that sucker right there. That's the kind I need to make a comeback. 
this sport, so <laughs> highs and lows. I mean, it's just the, the boats, the people fishing all around, and you know, the biggest tournament in, bass tournament in the world. You know, it gets frustrating. It's a Saturday, a lot of people out here and all, but boy, that'll, you start getting down, that right there will pump you back up and get you back going again. Get us back in the game. I think what Davey was talking about there is the fact that he's he's fishing in such a small area. He's such a courteous gentleman, but the boats are covering him up back there and really handicapping him, and I, I know it's very frustrating to him. Oh, baby. Just now I've started. <laughs> yeah. Now we've got it going again. Well, frustrated or not, Davey Hyde is making progress in this Bassmasters Classic. And here's the man you've all been waiting to see. Straight from Venice, Mike Iconelli. <laughs> What, 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 what? Yeah. Did you see that? Did you see that bull on that? Four pounder. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if you got to see that with the camera, but I saw a small bull back there. And it was probably that fish chasing bait and I pitched that bait back there and I, I reeled it past the boil and I didn't get him. And I kind of turned away and all of a sudden, woof. That's what I'm talking about. What are you talking about? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, I'm shaking like a leaf. Two more down. What do you think? How about it? Mike Iconelli fishing in the Venice area. As we know, Gary Klein fishing Venice. We'll take a look at his track right here. He takes a little bit different approach to getting down there. Tries to get in closer to the bank, get out of those big waves, that big water out there in the Gulf. The same result. There he is in Venice where all that water moves through all those braids of land. And if you don't have the right electronics, there's a good chance you're gonna get lost in this area. There's, there's 30 boats down there. You're gonna fish all day long in Venice and probably not see another one of the boats in the full day. Gary Fine's buried back in there somewhere. He's in good position now in this event. He is so good about figuring things out. Uh, you know, I'm convinced that half the fish we catch anyhow are not biting the bait because they're hungry. They're biting it because they're curious or it's a reaction strike, or they're territorial. So we really play a lot off the personality of the fish. So when you go through these areas and they're not actively feeding, then sometimes you just have to change techniques. And then you can keep catching the same, you know, same concentration of fish. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Because conditions here are obviously different than they were when I came through here. Um, during the tournament. And I'm just trying to come back in here and just try to figure them out. On the job is Gary Klein down in Venice, even farther away. Here's Jake Hendrick on his fifth fish of the day already. He's in Delacro, which is not very far as the crow flies from the launch at Bayou Signet. But the problem is you can't jump over the levees of the Mississippi River. So you basically have to go down almost as far as Venice and come back up. The river is a long, long trip. And Jay's fishing a Texas rigged worm, also throwing a tube a little bit, but uh, doing nothing fancy, just trying to keep his bait around the grass. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. That's what dreams are made of right there. That's why you work so hard all year. That's why you make these 120-mile runs. He got it, too. Mike Iaconelli is close to a limit of his fish as well. It's a giant. Stay with us now. Nobody lands a fish like this guy. about 
I just lost, I didn't lose it. I never got the hook and the fish there back there on that point. I pitched a jig and I saw about a four, four and a half pounder just turn on it and my line started moving off with it. And when I pulled, I guess the fish never got the bait all the way, but he never felt the point. So that may be a fish I can catch tomorrow. Gary Klein still with a great day, only about two pounds behind our new leader, Mike Iconelli. You see it right there, followed by Height and Klein. We're cutting the field down to 25 anglers for the final day. Mike Reynolds is the last man in. Look who didn't make the cut. Randy Howe, Kevin Van Dam, Shaw Grigsby, Skeet Reese, and more. Final day action when we return. The final day of the Sitco Bassmaster Classic can change your life forever. Boom, baby, I'm ready. After two days of Bassmaster Classic fishing, Mike Iaconelli has positioned himself to achieve the ultimate goal. All my success revolves around this spot, this magic sweet spot. What, 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 what? Woo! I've won tournaments before, but never to this magnitude. We're gonna do this for you tomorrow. Iaconelli's ready to contend, but he's going to have to contend with some of the greatest names and toughest competitors in the sport, including Davey Height. <laughs> Good deal. Gary Klein. Oh, I'm in the hunt. Oh, yeah, you can't count me out. Harold Allen. Fish God's got a smile on me. If they smile on me, anything's possible. And defending champion Jay Yellis. What I'm thinking about is winning this tournament. I'd like to bring it home again. I just always just try to execute a big, solid game plan. It's all about being number one today. But at this point in my career, uh, I don't think a second place would do a whole lot for my career. There is no second place in the Bassmaster Classic. Second place stinks. So let's get started with the final day, championship day in the most important event in fishing. We cut the field to 25, and we still have a large group going to Venice, which incidentally is a small town just south of New Orleans. And the reason for everyone headed that way, well, it's pretty simple. It's full of bass down there. And so far, the trip has been pretty much uneventful for everybody because the weather has been at least acceptable. And again, it's a four or five hour round trip, and that's gonna leave you two and a half to three hours to fish. And our first stop is with Kenyon Hill, and there's no secrets here. Everyone is flipping plastics or, or jigs around the cover lines in two or three feet of water. Kenyon starts the day in sixth place, had a great day yesterday, moved up 13 places. Nice little keeper to start the day. Oh, no, you can't have that. Not on this day. Not the final championship day of the Classic. Oops is right. Gary Klein knows he cannot execute like that on this day. Gary having fished in 21 Bassmaster Classics. He knows also that you got to have bigger fish than this one right here. You've got to upgrade your size as well to compete. Gary Klein is always a threat, as is this man. Over to Kenyon Hill, the winner of our last event of the regular season on the Alabama River. Kenyon here is fishing a plastic worm. Texas rigging a zoom trick worm. Chicken bug chartreuse tail. Get as straight as you can and pull up a half ounce sinker. There's no little butterfish. Okay, here's the man to watch, Michael Iaconelli. He's still swimming his worm around the around the same there. grassy oh, area that we've there. seen him in all day long. Come on, show us some emotion, Mike. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh, he ate it. It's a shell he ate it, too. It's on that man's swim worm. Good two-pound fish. Yeah. Well, Iaconelli and Klein prosper. Others struggle. Mark Menendez and Barkley here. They've definitely cooled off. Come on. And Davey Height, who made a big move yesterday, oh, is also cooled off. His biggest problem, though, as I said earlier, has been other yeah, boats and I have to say that, that he got. only has one area down there at the end of that pocket that's the only one he's using and the local boats just won't let him get in there they surely know the situation here and I I think they should give him a break look at this 
this is tough, man. I know they have as much right to be in that pocket as Davy does, but boy, he only needs it for two hours. Get out of there, guys. Four hits so far, and I've landed three of them. Fish are a little bit smaller quality, but they are kind of active. So I'm gonna run back to that ditch where I caught my better quality fish yesterday and then come back out here and fish this stretch again. Then I'm gonna go down and fish some of my other stuff. But, uh, you know, hey, I haven't, I don't have a good fish in live well. I've got three keepers, and I don't think any of the three that I have mean anything. The Louisiana Delta, it is big and bad, and you gotta be big and bad if you wanna wear the classic crown. That's our friend Kurt Lytle down there. He's not out of it yet. He could be in it at the very end, so we'll see whose life is gonna change when we come back. Don't go away. Final day competition at the Sitco Bassmaster Classic. There's your leaderboard. Mike Iconelli on top with 30 pounds and some tough customers chasing him. Gary Klein at 28 and behind him, Davey Height. You find Gary Klein still in that same place near Venice, Louisiana. Gary Klein again fishing in his 21st Bassmasters Classic. And he has to be a sentimental favorite because you never know how many times in your career you're going to be this close to the title. And every time I see Gary fishing, I'm, I'm interested in the water color down there. It's almost muddy, but... The tide and the, the higher water is making it a lot muddier than, say, the water that Harold Allen is in right now. Tommy, I think this is our first look at Harold, and he may be lost. We, we may never see him again. You can, can he... get down to the end of this chute <laughs> and just spend the rest of your life down there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. See what I mean, Billy? Oh, that is a giant. That is a good start. A good start. Good solid two pound fish, just a chunk, man. Real chunk. Harold Allen had such a great season. I'm so proud to see him here in the Classic, and we've moved back over to Ike and Nelly. Paybacks! This is the first time we've seen him when he wasn't us, sitting on his flat, mossy, grassy man, point. It's small this morning. However, he is fishing in the mouth of this little canal here. That spot, his honey hole, is right behind him. He's letting it rest for a minute. There's a good one. Yeah, buddy, kicker. Ow! That's a nice one. Boy, I swam that jig up over there and he popped it. That's what I'm looking for. Four more like that, and this kid's on the roll. That's right there is what takes you to a 15 pound stringer. See, so like what I'm thinking right now is I only have one fish, and this is it. That's what I'm going to need to win this classic. I need four more bites like that, and that'll be a 15 pound stringer. Well, that was just a perfect little pitch. Came up and over the branch, and the fish was suspended, just like that nice one that I lost yesterday. And she, thoop, she tagged it. That was perfect. That was just, man, I get chills. That was exciting. Here comes a perfect example of what Iconelli has been doing. See that fish show himself? Was up on that swim worm. Mike gets his, his swim worm in, then he throws a finesse worm. This worm will just fall slowly to the bottom, and when he gets down in the area where that fish was at, he's got him. That one two punch I was doing yesterday. Speed worm, they missed the, uh, the swim worm. They throw the super finesse worm down there by Mance. It's five, it's a small limit, but it's a start. I just gotta keep moving in this first hour. I can't get too bogged down. This first hour and two hours is key. Boy, I'm shaking. A little old pound and a half fish make you shake. That's a good deal. Let's see. have to remind you at this point, this is the big one, the Bassmaster Classic. These anglers have so much pressure on them because there is nothing bigger in the world of fishing. Absolutely nothing. A little bit of pressure. A little bit. A little bit of one there.
Well, at this point, Iconelli was just a whisker ahead of Klein. Who would prevail? Well, I can tell you this. We're going to have the winner in our studio before too long, so don't go away. There's much more to come. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Chevy Trucks, by Mercury, and by Diamond Cut Jeans. Watching final round action from the Sitco Bassmaster Classic New Orleans. We are in the Louisiana Delta. This is the boat of Harold Allen near Venice, Louisiana. Look at the size of the little chutes he's running through here. Harold, 26 years on the tournament trail looking for this classic win. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, Billy. Billy, Billy. Here he comes. Keeps this up. Could be the day, Billy. Could be the day. Oh, she. Well, first of all, I want to know who Billy is. <laughs> that was uh, uh, Billy, the cameraman that Harold was actually talking to there. There's that swim worm cutting across the water from Iconelli. And I think that one more good fish will put him over the edge. Emotionally, that is. There he goes! That's the one! last two days I've been coming in here and throwing that same worm that uh, that's that man's swim worm with an eighth ounce weight and I got to thinking about that yesterday and that really defeats the purpose because what's happening is the eighth ounce weight was bringing it too low it's such a shallow water column in, in here that these fish are high up and uh, so I rigged one up last night without a weight same worm without a weight man what an exciting strike that was. Now over for our first look at Jeff Reynolds of Platter, Oklahoma. How'd you like to be him and have to follow up oh, that on, fish man. catch by Mike Iconelli? But Jeff is a, an excellent fisherman in his own right and has had a great year, 22nd on the Sitco Bassmaster Tour in the year-end rankings. And boy, this is a perfect example again of these guys flipping jigs in the terrible, terrible brushy weeds, canes, and to be able to get a fish to strike and feeling That's back in there about. and then actually get him out is quite a little feat. And and Gary Klein, my gosh, he is still in this thing at this point in, in spite of the fact of the success that Iconelli is having and Gary is still, boy, he, he hasn't he hasn't swayed from his technique whatsoever, pitching that jig over Watch against out. the bank. And, and this will make a limit for him. He will be nearly 36 pounds. You want to see something funny? I want you to That's take a look at our manager. show. Back in January, a piece of tape, back. Mike Iconelli was in the studio before the season okay, ever started, uh, and Jerry Mike asked him about his fantasies classic, so of winning the Bassmaster Classic. Mess around and win the thing and, and get it over with. Well, you talking about the classic? Uh, <laughs> that's something, I mean, I, I get that question a lot, and you have to set goals for yourself. And definitely one of the goals of my career is Angler of the Year, Bush Angler of the Year, and the other goal was a classic win. And, and again, not being cocky, but being confident, that's something I feel like I will accomplish in my career. So I'd like to get it over this, this coming year. But sooner or later, I think that's something I can win. Don't go away. Final day action when we return. Final round action from the Sitco Bassmaster Classic. Harold Allen has finished his fishing. He's completed his limit. He sits at 34 pounds. Mike Iconelli in the lead with 36 pounds, but look at that one pound behind and charging Gary Klein. And I really felt that this ditch right here would be an overlooked ditch by the rest of the contestants. 
there's no local pressure in here, no traffic, and it just, it, it really had a lot of things going for it. That was one of the reasons why I was kind of excited about it and, you know, again, trying to save it for today. <laughs> By gosh, that's a good bag there. Perfect call spot, current break on the on the log, and I just called my last little fish. So that's where we are at this moment. Gary Klein has now tied the leader, Mike Iconelli. So what does the leader think at this point? Why don't we ask him? We got him here. <laughs> you didn't think we were going to do this show without having the champ here. Mike, thanks for being here. No problem. It's great being I know, here. I know you got a little yeah. voice left, enough to make it through the show. <laughs> enough to make it through. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll hold up for it. What's going through your mind at this moment? Well, it's, uh, you know, it's tough. The Classic, there's so much pressure on that last day, and, you, and you're just trying to hold on to a lead. And when you have individuals behind you that are phenoms in the sport, yeah. it, it can cause a little disruption. But, you know, I'm really focused on what I'm doing. I'm concentrating on every cast, and I'm trying to make it through that last day. You know, that, that's exactly what I was going to ask you, Tommy. I want to know about Gary Klein. I would not want to know he was following me back there. He, he's, a, he's a warrior, isn't he? Gary Klein is an absolutely awesome individual, a great angler. A good story on him is in the first major tournament ever fished as an amateur in 1993, I drew Gary Klein as my pro partner. No. And I, firsthand, I saw what we call, we call him the machine on tour. And he truly is the machine because he's a fishing machine. He's just one of the best out there. So, you know, it, it's tough thinking about that. But at the same time, I need to concentrate on every cast. Every minute during the day counts. You're not fishing against him, are you? I'm not fishing against mm -hmm. him. You, what you want to do is always worry about the controllables and never the uncontrollables. So your competition, the weather, mechanical breakdowns, everything's out of your mind in that field. I'm worried about the little green fish swimming out there, and that's <laughs> it. So, Tommy, he's tied up right now. He's tied up right now, so you get in your mind what you're going to do. Show us what you're going to do with what you got right you there. Got Mike, you've got 10 minutes left, 15 minutes left. Yeah, we, we want to know about these lures and what's happening. Well, I basically use these three baits all week. The, this is a, a bait by Man's Bait Company called a Man Stone Jig. It's a 3 8 ounce. It's in a pattern that's imitate a bluegill, uh, olive green, orange, just a perfect bluegill imitation. And I really, I use this all week to try to catch my bigger fish. I'm swimming it around the outside of vegetation. But my primary lure for numbers, and especially on this last day, became this prototype Man's Bait called a swim worm. And it's just a phenomenal worm. And basically what I was doing with this bait is swimming it or reeling it, just like a spinnerbait, slow rolling a spinnerbait. And a lot of times you would have a strike on this bait, they would miss it, they would boil on it, and I could come back with this man's super finesse worm and catch it 99% of the time. Saw you do that fish. over and over again. Just an awesome, at... awesome one-two punch. Well, uh, 10 minutes. You got 10 minutes to go now. Tell us what happened. 10 minutes to go. I'm fishing my numbers bait, trying to get one more decent fish to get rid of a little one. And I have a big fish boil up on it. Big swell, big circle. Had him hooked for a second. Come back, have this rigged on a spinner rod, ready to go. Throw it out there and doink. There he goes. I, you know, I, I feel comfortable, but I'll tell you why. Because I absolutely did the best I could do today. I mean, I, I did things today to catch fish that I didn't think I had to do. I got up on a flat. I started fishing a frog. I started doing different stuff. So I adapted well today. I just, I'm disappointed in the size I, I had today. I only only have two real good ones and one decent one, and the rest are, the other two were peewees. So, you know, but maybe other guy struggles, you know, maybe that'll keep me in there. I don't know. I have 10 minutes left to fish, and I'm not going to quit. I'm going to fish every minute. Just missed a strike there. Let's pick up back. Big one! Big one! Oh my god! This is a giant. It's gonna be cold on something. This is a giant. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god, it's the winning fish. I 
can't believe it. Oh my God, we were just talking about it. <sighs> Folks at home, that one's for you, baby. Woo! Yeah! Yeah! Oh my God, I love it. Thank you, Lord. Oh my God. I just can't, can't say enough about the enthusiasm for this boy when he hooks the fish. Is that? Mike, is that real? Are Folks. you are you nuts or what? Oh, it's uh, <laughs> nuts is a good term. I'm I'm absolutely real when I do that. I mean, the analogy I give is when I'm home and I'm by myself. I'm in my 10 acre farm pond and there's nobody out in the water. I'm in my John boat and I catch a five pounder. I act the same way. It's just that's my excitement for the sport. I I always act like that, and that's really what drives me in the sport is my love for the fight and the chase and the hunt. It's just it's awesome. It's awesome. When we come back, the final moments in the weigh-in of Mike Iaconelli's career. Don't go away. The Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail is brought to you by Yamaha. By Sitco. And by Bush. Welcome back to the Sitco Bassmaster Tournament Trail. Yeah. Here is the story up to now. Gary Klein fishing in his 21st Bassmasters Classic has just tied things up with one Michael Iaconelli, this fellow right here. Mr. Iaconelli makes his last cast of the day and lands the fish that could be the winner. What happens then? You make the long run back from Venice. I make the long run back from Venice. I have a two hour drive ahead of me and I'm still not even thinking about did I win, did I lose? I'm still concentrating on the moment. I'm concentrating on my route back. Grab the steering wheel, look at my GPS. I need to make it back to weigh-in. So once I get back to Bayou Signet, they pull us out. Then it's a long process of going over in your mind. Is this enough? Is it hey, not but enough? Let me stop you here. Did you, did you have plenty of time when you got there? Did you have five minutes to spare or anything? No. In, in a tournament like this, you definitely want to leave enough cushion. Okay. Yeah, All so right. I, I left myself 20 minutes to spare. So they get you back to the ramp. Everyone sort of gets the fish loaded up. Everyone goes back to the, to the New Orleans arena. To what happens arena. then? Right. So now we have, once we're in the parking lot, we have a long wait. We have to wait our turn until we get pulled into the arena. And that is probably one of the most stressful hour <laughs> or 45 minute periods of my life, you know. You're just sitting in a truck with the truck driver. Sitting in a truck with the truck driver, yeah. And, and members of the press are coming up and, and asking you questions, how did your day go? So now, finally, after three days, everything's boiling down in my mind. Did I do enough? Did I catch enough? And uh, hmm. very, very stressful, very tense. It's known to all at that point that you're among the top six, and the top six are the last guys to make an appearance on the stage. How did they get you out there physically to the stage? Where did you wait then? Well, once we got to the stage, it's, it, it was really an amazing setup. It was, it was rock and roll, you know. I mean, they brought us out in, in, form for, in, in great fashion. But up until the very last moment, I didn't know. There were small rumors flying around that Gary had a 13 or 14 pound bag. And in my mind, that was enough for him to win the tournament. Eight times a champion for Gary Klein. Mission is 21st Bassmasters Classic. He needs 10 pounds to take the lead. Watch it. 11 pounds, 14 ounces, Gary Klein! So Gary Klein weighs in his fish. At that moment, do you think you've won? After Gary weighed his fish, I had to do a quick calculation in my mind. By just about the time that I figured I might have it won, they called me up to weigh my fish. So even then, it was still, did I do this? Did I not do this? And uh, again, very tense, very stressful, a lot of anticipation. <laughs> to be crowned the 2003 Sipco Bassmasters Classic champ. You need 9-3. Watch the scales. 10 pounds, 14 ounces! Classic champion! Man, nothing like that ride, I guess, huh? Absolutely awesome. No ride like that in the world. We've got five questions for you. Number one, who's your angling hero? Rick Klun. Rick Klun. Why is that? Rick Klun, because of his consistency in the sport, his ability to always figure the fish out. All right. What is the CD that's in the stereo in your truck right now? CD, I have uh, a rapper by the name of 50 Cent. The title is, uh, ironically, Get Rich or Die Trying. 
suitable for dancing. Very suitable. Suitable for dancing. for dancing. Where were you when you first realized that you wanted to win the Bassmaster Classic? I was probably, shoot, 10 or, 10 or 11 years old. I was on vacation in the Poconos, and in my mind, I was having a mini classic against nobody out there bass fishing. <laughs> All right. Won that one, too, didn't you? Won that one. Sure did. <laughs> well, how did you celebrate winning this one? Well, we went to, uh, we went to Bourbon Street, and uh, a lot of other anglers were there, and they were very nice to me that night, and we had a good time. Jerry, I've one got more? one more question. One more question. This is kind of serious, Mike. You've won this event. You've got a trophy. You've got a big check. You've also got some responsibility now. I think, anyway, maybe for the rest of your life, you are responsible to bass fishing. What are you going to bring to the sport? Definitely, definitely. That's, that's a great statement. To me, what I'm going to try to bring to the sport is I'm going to try to change the stereotypes in the sport. You know, I think the biggest thing in fishing is that has been stereotyped as being kind of a slow, low-paced, southern-dominated sport. And I really want to take it up to the next level. You know, I want to show that anybody can be involved in this sport. You know, this is really an X sport. This is an exciting sport, and it is. So I really want to bring it to that level, hopefully bring a whole new genre of people into the sport, and just get everybody excited about fishing. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports.